Hi guys, it's Wendy from Set Apart Art Studios. I am here today in my home studio, cooped up with my family, as you are too. And I thought I would do a free little art lesson for you guys with kiddos. Actually, this could even be done with adults. It's kind of fun. It's a butterfly. Um, I did it in watercolor. A symmetrical painting. I got this idea from Cassie Stevens on YouTube. She did it in her classroom. She's an art teacher. You with kiddos at home should follow her because she's fun and she has some great ideas. Um, so she did it a little different than what I'm going to do, but what you need at home, you could do this at home. You probably, if you have kids, you probably have these art supplies. This is just really cheap watercolor paper and um, you could probably do it on cardstock if you weren't using watercolor. If you had like um, tempera paints or acrylic paints at home, you could use those on cardstock, but watercolor, just the cheapest watercolor paper, um, you nothing fancy here, you just need cheap watercolor, a little pan of watercolors, and that's really all you need. I'll show you some different versions or options of it after it's done. Um, so let's get started. So what you see here is I have a piece, a big piece of watercolor paper and I folded it in half. This will be our uh, line of symmetry. So here we got some math facts. We've got school and art class, right? So the line of symmetry is like an imaginary line that passes through the center of a shape or an object and divides it into identical halves. So we got a paint a little bit fast with this art lesson. So I have my pan of watercolors. I have a, a paintbrush and some water. So I'm going to get my black wet. And we're going to start painting the body of the monarch. So the monarch ha body has three parts. It has, well, it kind of blobbed into one here, but it has three parts. One, two, three. So the parts of it are the head, the thorax, which is the center part, and the abdomen, which is kind of the longer part. Look at that. You've been learning a little bit more about science here. So we have the head, and I'm only gonna do half of it. The head, the middle part, which is the thorax, and then we have the abdomen, which is kind of long and skinny, and I'm doing it kind of fast. So what you do on one side, I'm gonna fold the paper, and I'm gonna massage it. I'm gonna press it, rub it, Open it up. Woo, look at that. Now look at the center isn't painted. You know, there's a little bit of a white spice. If that bothers you, you can go in there and fill it in. Otherwise, I think it's kind of neat looking. Looks a little more artsy to me. So now we're gonna do um, the top part of the wing. I'm gonna grab some of this and I'm gonna paint a line just a little bit under the head and kind of bring it out. And I'm doing it kind of fast. This is pretty wet paint. And I'm gonna fold it and massage. Ooh la la. Okay, now I'm gonna do the center part of the wing here. Fold, massage. Open it up. And then I'm gonna connect the two there. Boop, boop. Massage. And I'm gonna do the bottom part of the wing. Two. Hold, massage. And then we can connect the two. Oh, you got a butterfly, look at that. So now we can go in there and I'm gonna add an antenna. I'm gonna get some of the water off of that. And now we can do the pretty veining in the butterfly. Kind of, to me, that mimics like stained glass. So I'm going to put parallel lines, which are like lines next to each other. There's one. And then you can break it up. Doop, doop, doop. Like I said, that didn't show up so hot, so you can always go back in there and, and fix that if you want to. I'm gonna do another parallel line. Maybe I'll just go in here and add that veining right away. 
and then you can put a little design in here. So say I want to go it the way it is I don't know just make it a little darker all right so there you have it kind of reminds me a little bit of those ink blobs that you I don't know I saw on TV shows of like therapists using to diagnose people but there is your butterfly so I am going to go in once this dries Watercolor usually dries pretty fast. I see that I got a little heavy in some areas. It might take a little longer. But um, you can go in here and you can fill in each of these spaces. Um, you can use watercolor. You can use crayons to fill them in. You can use chalk pastels, paint, um, whatever you have on hand, really. But I'm going to probably demonstrate with watercolor. That's what I used for this one. Another cool thing, if you didn't have pan watercolors and you had washable Crayola markers, you can use those and turn them into watercolors too. But I'll show you that in a minute. So these are somewhat dry. If you're going to use watercolor to fill in the sections, you just need to be careful that you don't add too much water that it reactivates the black. So just know that you don't want to use too much water. I'll show you a couple watercolor painting techniques. So my water here is pretty dirty, so I am going to try to get that black. I got some clean water here for the pretty colors we're going to use. So these are monarchs, so they're more on the warm color, the orange colors. This is a wet on wet technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a section and I'm going to paint it with just water and not a ton of water because I don't want it to lose control and go out of the boundaries that I want it to go in. And I don't want it to reactivate the black. So that section is all wet. So what you could do is you grab some color. So I'm gonna wet some orange color and I'm gonna wet maybe some yellow. And I'm just gonna drop the color in where I want it. And it kind of explodes. On better um, watercolor paper, it really explodes. This isn't the best quality, but hey, that's okay. And you can grab some yellow and let those colors kind of dance together. That's wet on wet. The colors kind of mingle together. They explode a little more. So again, I'll just paint an area wet. Not to go too crazy. And then I go in here and I add some color and it kind of explodes. Add some yellow. My paintbrush is so tall, it keeps hitting my light. Again, I'm just painting a section. Oopsie, it's reactivating that black there. You gotta be careful. Make sure your black is dry. For time's sake, mine's probably could be a little drier. You can hit it with a blow dryer too. Just go real light so it doesn't take any of the puddles and spread them. Do a light setting on your blow dryer. Again, you're just hitting color in there. Maybe grab a little yellow. Let it dance together. Your paint's going to go where the water goes. So that's kind of wet on wet, and they kind of they dance together and they get mixed together. So you could also just do have it be wet, or I mean have your section be dry. And just put water in your paint and just use wet on dry. And you can see the color's a little more intense. You can lighten it by, sorry, I'm going to move my light, just adding water. And if you get too much, so look at there, there's quite a bit of paint there, you can take your brush dry it on your napkin and make your brush like a Mr. Thirsty, kind of like a straw, and it just sucks that color up a little bit. You can hit it on your napkin. I know I make sound effects, I'm weird. So there, you can just do wet on dry. 
colors a little more intense. So there's that. Um, once that dries a little bit, you can go in here and just add a little bit of water and it makes like little explosions of water rings of just water you can add in there and it makes little rings of water within your color. So this is pretty dry. I'm going to show you another technique. Um, if you didn't have pan water colors at home and you had washable Crayola markers, I unfortunately don't have washable Crayola markers at home. I have them all at the studio, but I do have these Tombows, which are the same thing. They, um, they move around with water. So you can take any washable marker and you can fill in this space. So say I'm gonna do a little orange. It doesn't have to be super solid, because look what happens. I'm gonna add a little yellow. I'm gonna go over that. The Tombows are really nice markers, but they're really expensive. We don't usually use those for kiddo lessons. Um, you just add water to this and it turns it into watercolor. It's kind of fun. There's a lot. I added it a lot on there. I could probably use that for this. Just take the color here and add it here. So those are different ways that you can maybe use some of the art supplies you have at home. Get creative. Um, I'd love to see if you do this art lesson, if you post it on our Facebook page. I'm missing um, seeing people's faces. So it'd be neat to see you on our Facebook page doing art projects. Makes my heart happy. So there's different ways you can do this. I'll try to, if I don't get too busy here, um, making kits for people. I will try to post some fun art lessons on here free for you guys and just to keep your kids occupied, hoping that you have some art supplies at home. So I like this technique, it's kind of fun. If, usually people who have kiddos at home have washable Crayola markers or pan watercolors. So I think any this is pretty easy to do. Um, even if you had tempera paints, you could do this with tempera paints. Um, you could do tempera paint on the outside, let it dry, and then they could fill it in with whatever you have, chalk, whatever. They could fill it in. This kind of looks to me um, like a stained glass window. It's pretty. So the outside, you could do this. Add a little yellow. water and you can paint the background you can really get creative you can do whatever you want with the background my water's getting a little muddy here so that's why these colors look a little muddy but that's all right time's sake I'm not gonna change it so what you do to one half paint paint exactly the same on the other You'll have a nice balanced painting. Now with kiddos, they don't, you know, they don't have to do it this way. If you guys want to, you can um, have them paint patterns in the back. They can use Sharpies and fill it in with different patterns. Um, it'd probably be a little crazy, um, but you know, it'd occupy them, keep them busy for a while, right? Going back to my paint here. I'll just kind of fill it in just for time's sake. That's just a fun little way to do background. The thing with um, like cheap watercolor paper, if you keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing like this, it's gonna take the tooth off and you're gonna get these little balls of paper that start to form. So let the water do the work, not so much the brush, because if you keep rubbing, it's gonna wreck the tooth of your paper. So just a little heads up there. So there you go. Eventually it'll look like this. So have fun, post pictures on our um, Set Apart Art 
page on Facebook. I'd love to see them. And I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I hope it's not raining so you can get outside and get some fresh air too. Bye guys. Miss y'all.